This is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. In this bulletin, Mosese Tikoitonga confirms resignation from military. New military commander Commodore William Inapoto ready for new challenge. And Health Ministry reveals that less than half of babies born every year are exclusively breastfed. The nation has been assured the country is stable and there is no tension between the Republic of the Fiji military forces and the government. The assurance is given by outgoing RFMF Commander Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga as he waits to take up a diplomatic posting. Akusita Tale has more. Having served in the military for 33 years and eight months, the former military commander says he is ready to take up a personal ambition a post in the Foreign Service. We might as well make the changes now. I'll be still around doing induction if there's any help that's uh, needed uh, for clarification on any of the issues that's been developed over the last 12 months. Then I'm still around to discuss that, eh? rather than uh, giving over the reins of leadership and running away all of a sudden. After talking with his family and Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama, Mosese Tikuitong attended his resignation over the weekend effective immediately. Tikwe Tonga has reassured the nation the RFMF is in good hands with the newly appointed acting commander, Commodore William Inopoto. Well, he's helped us mold the RFMF into what it should be. Um, and with that, he has all the capability to, to take the RFMF to new heights. Uh, something that I, like I said, I live with a peaceful heart, knowing that the RFMF is in better hands. He says there is no tension within government and the country is stable despite the changes. It is uh, a privilege to have served uh, the country in the RFMF, but I am excited that this is another opportunity for me to serve the country in the capacity that uh, uh, the government has allowed me to, to serve in. And I wish the RFMF and the country every success in the future. Tikwe Tonga will begin his induction training with the Foreign Affairs Ministry next Monday. Akusita Tali, FBC News. Outgoing RFMF Commander Brigadier General Mosese Tikwe Tonga has dismissed claims made by social media that Attorney General Ayasaid Kayum was detained yesterday. Tikwe Tonga says Fiji now thrives on rumors and no one can control what is posted on social media. He has assured the nation there was no such detainment at the Queen Elizabeth Barracks in Suva over the weekend. Tikoitonga adds it's very unfortunate that people pick up these circumstances to raise their own views. The Attorney General has uh, played a pivotal role in the construct of our government and the way our government will run in the future. Uh, and we have to give him credit for it. Eh? Uh, the RFMF is very stable. Uh, and, uh, we're all still very good friends. Tikoi Tonga acknowledged the mainstream media for reporting on the facts and not picking up rumors that have been posted on social media. Meanwhile, the chairperson of the Media Industry Development Authority, Ashwin Raj, has advised the public to take heed of the assurance given by Tikoi Tonga and ignore materials posted on social media. Newly appointed acting commander of the Fiji military forces, Commodore William Naupoto, says there will be no big changes. Naupoto took over the helm after the resignation of Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga, who is pursuing a diplomatic career. Maggie Boyle with the story. He's a familiar face in the executive circle of the Republic of Fiji military forces and after an eight-year absence to work in the civil service and only five months back in the army as chief of staff, Commodore William Naupoto has been catapulted to command the military. Every new job, uh, you need to learn the ropes very quickly. Uh, you know, 4,000 strong forces, uh, big number to lead. 
but lucky for me, I've been there for a while now. Uh, so I do not think uh, it will be a big uh, problem for me. The uh, challenges of leadership remain, as you know, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm happy. Now, Porto was asked why the change at the helm has been so sudden, with his predecessor's resignation and his promotion effective immediately. Uh, it's a decision that has been made and, uh, you know, uh, you get told what to do. Uh, I've been appointed and uh, agreed to by the relevant authorities to take over the post. Uh, I guess um, you know it's a matter of uh, looking at the job uh, and, and move forward. Now Porter says he will hold his first briefing with his officers later this week. I have a sense of where the force is moving, what is required to be done. So no big change in, in, in a sense, uh, if I put it in a nutshell. Uh, and I have uh, very good people around me uh, within the officers corps, within the military leadership that will help me. Uh, do the job that is required to be done. The acting commander position is a three-month contract, after which a substantive appointment is expected to be made. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The Indian government has offered Fiji some property in New Delhi's diplomatic quarter to build a new high commission. Talks on the new site began after last year's visit by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Fiji. Fiji's High Commissioner to India, Yogesh Karan, revealed on FBC TV's For the Record last night that the property is worth $120 million. The price of real estate in India is perhaps is one of the most expensive in the world now. And uh, we have had a reciprocal arrangement uh, with the land that we have uh, allocated for the Indian mission here, and uh, we're very privileged, I think, to to be uh, to secure that land because there's hardly any land available in that area. The property is in Chanakyapuri, an affluent neighborhood and diplomatic enclave established in the 1950s. Less than half of the babies born annually in Fiji are exclusively breastfed, and the Ministry of Health is concerned about the high numbers of babies who are missing out. The issue was highlighted at the launch of World Breastfeeding Week today. Ali Kimbiev reports. Out of the 20,000 born in Fiji every year, 12,000 are not exclusively breastfed. Now that is not very good for Fiji, and we uh, today hopefully in our efforts every August will improve that uh, breastfeeding rate so that our children will have the best start. With the theme breastfeeding and work, let's make it work. World Breastfeeding Week calls for action to support women in combining breastfeeding and work, whether it is in a formal, informal or home setting. One reason children are forced to leave breastfeeding at an early stage is because mothers have to return to work after their maternity leave. In order for the mothers to continue breastfeeding at work, it would be nice for the employers to support them by providing crashes at the workplaces. Any space to let these mothers breastfeed their babies and even to express their milk. Dr. Tama Keg says mothers really should have the right to breastfeed at work it is recommended that infants be exclusively breastfed for the first six months of life. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Rain to ease by tomorrow. That's up after the break. So what was the question again? Oh, why, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have... Two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, <clears throat> because I am fast and slick. And plus, I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Bulumanaka, my name is Real, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 p.m. to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. <laughs> Although it is 
rained in the western and northern division overnight. It is not enough to provide relief to farmers. The acting director for meteorology, Misaele Funaki, says residents should store water because the dry season will persist until the end of October. The sudden change in weather, including some rainfall in parts of the country, has been the topic of conversations. The acting director for meteorology office, Misaele Funaki, says a trough of low pressure has brought on the rain. The low pressure is linked to a tropical depression. There was a lot of variation in the rainfall. Some centers, a uh, few of the centers had uh, 24 hour rainfall, greater than 20 minutes. And, uh, but few of the centers uh, uh, had a rainfall that were relatively low, but it was uh, something considering that we are in a dry spell right now. But uh, uh, with the trough expected to gradually move away, we should expect the rain to gradually ease as well. The tropical depression is expected to gradually weaken by tomorrow, but strong winds are expected to remain. Uh, there is a strong wind warning that is enforced for, for our maritime uh, areas and also for certain land areas of Fiji. So there is a factor known as the wind chill factor. So with it being windy, uh, it also brings a cooler element that we are experiencing over the last uh, few days. Funaki says a tropical depression in the far northwest of Fiji doesn't pose any threat to the country. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. There has been a rise in cases of email spoofing, particularly targeting our businesses. The Fiji Financial Intelligence Unit warns entities and individuals to take the necessary precautions to ensure they are not victims of hackers. Chanel Sivan with the story. Email spoofing is the creation of email messages with a forged sender address by hackers. The next time you send a business email, be very careful. Your account may be watched by a hacker overseas. In one particular case, a business, local businessman, a business entity, lost US $95,000, which equates to around 200,000 Fijian dollars in one single transaction that was meant to be going to the genuine supplier abroad. But because of email spoofing, the instructions were intercepted. Uh, the local business instructed the commercial bank based on the intercepted uh, communication, email communication that the funds be diverted to a different bank account and of course that different bank account belonged to the cyber criminal, the fraudster. Because of this, commercial banks have changed their mechanism when receiving payment orders via emails. That is to first get the instructions and confirm the payment order with the sender. The second thing that we have uh, done is uh, to uh, caution uh, all the businesses in Fiji uh, to be very careful about uh, when they receive uh, email and communicate and confirm orders and confirm to the uh, commercial banks here in Fiji the payment instructions via email. Baksh says from 14 cases in the last two years, they have not seen any local involvement in the crime. Good antivirus softwares is also a recommendation made by the FIU in protecting emails. Channel Shivan, FBC News. Fiji's permanent representative to Geneva Ambassador Nazar Shamim feels that there is a high risk of corruption when it comes to awarding of government tender. She made this comment at a symposium in Suva today. Ellen Stahls reports. Corruption was high on the agenda, as well as the abuse of office by public officials and those in public service and government. And if you look at the corruption cases before the courts, a lot of them turn around the conduct of government officials, how they behave, uh, their tolerance to conduct which is outside the rules and regulations of government. Ambassador Nazar Shamim added that it might even be time for Fiji to review some of its existing laws. Some thought can be given in the future to whether our tender procedures are working well for Fiji and whether we should consider open tender procedures where everyone can see how a person gets, a company gets a tender for a government contract. She also answered questions participants had on accepting gifts through traditional Itauke ceremonies and gave clarification on the definition of who qualifies as a public official and public servants. Fiji Roads Authority Chief Executive Neil Cook says there is a need to educate leaders about the law, especially when it comes to corruption. It's really about looking at the long-term vision and, and really sending the message that as professions, as industry, um, we we need to be
be heading towards self-regulation, self-policing in these areas of, of good governance, ethics and just general compliance with the law. The workshop also heard about a range of issues including corruption, bribery and safeguarding against accepting gifts, to name a few. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. The team from the Sahadri Group of Hospitals in India will be in the country tomorrow. They will be based in Suva for about three weeks, conducting surgeries which could save thousands of dollars for the patients usually sent overseas. Shireen Lata reports. A group from Sahadri Hospitals, which is the largest chain of hospitals in the state of Maharashtra in India, will be providing their services to the locals from tomorrow. Health Ministry's spokesperson Evelyn Mani says the team consists of 10 doctors, nurses and cardiosurgeons. It's a public-private partnership with uh, the Ministry and uh, Sayadri Hospital. Uh, so what we expect uh, our people, well we're trying to provide our people with services uh, within the country um, so that that way they don't have to travel abroad um, to receive these uh, specialist uh, treatment. Over the years, the Sahadri team has performed a lot of successful surgeries in the country. 26 patients received treatment last year. So far, seven patients have shown interest in having their treatment done by the Sahadri group. The ministry is urging more patients to come forward. If you're a patient or you know, you know someone in your family that requires this treatment, then we encourage them to um, visit the Ministry of Health for more information. Extremely good uh, services and quality. So our, our people can benefit a lot um, in, in the areas or uh, where medical facilities or treatment are not available. Uh. Surgeons from India's Sahadri Hospital have been coming to Fiji on a voluntary basis since 2012. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Sports is up next. Here's Jamie with the latest. Thank you, Jackie. And good evening in sports tonight. Fiji Pearls leave for the Netball World Cup. And flying Fijians make seven changes for PNC final. This and more after the break. Gold FM only the classic hits. Beautiful song from the group Firehouse and When I Look Into Your Eyes. Before that, you heard from Smokey Robinson with One Hot Beat. We'll take a short break and join us in the next hour for more music from Seal. Bulabla. I'm DJ Tora. Join me every weekdays, 7 until midnight, on the Premium Classics. Right here on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Vodafone flying Fijians coach John McKee has made seven changes to his side that beat Japan last week for the Pacific Nations Cup final match against Samoa tomorrow. The most notable change is regular winger Waisea Nayadha Levu shifting to outside centre ahead of Veroniki Ngoneva. Veteran hooker Sunia Koto comes in for Tuopati Talmaitonga while Akapusingera replaces Malakai Ravulo at open side flanker making way for Sikusa Matendingo at number eight. Versatile halfback Nicola Matualu makes his first start in the position this season with Nemea Kenatale relegated to the bench while Aseli Tukwe Rutuma replaces Napoleon Inalanga at blindside wing. The flying Fijians take on Samoa in the PNC final at 12 p.m. tomorrow in Vancouver, Canada. The Fiji Pearls have departed for the Netball World Cup that begins at the end of the week. Pooled alongside Wales, Uganda and Zambia, the national side aims to win all of its pool matches. Josephine Navula has more. All geared up, the national netball side are ready to depart the country today for the much-anticipated Netball World Cup. So our preparation has been good, um, at particularly in this last month with the Pacific Games and then the Test Match in New Zealand. So all that really now needs to come together um, and everyone needs to, to be at their best on every day. The girls, led by Merene Liku, are expecting a strong outing from other teams in their pool. So we have uh, Wales and then two African sides, Uganda and Zambia. Uh, Uganda and Zambia haven't been in the World Cup for a number of years. Uh, so we don't know a lot about them. Um, African nations, apart from Malawi and South Africa, aren't playing outside the region a lot. Uh, so we'll probably be able to make a better assessment when, when we see them uh, in their opening match against each other. 
Fiji Pearls will be playing Wales in the opening match of the World Cup this Friday. Uh, Fiji met Wales twice in the World Cup last time, 1-1, one, one, lost one match, so expecting it to be very tough and very close. <laughs> Fiji is determined to improve their position from the world ranking. It's currently in seventh place. Josephine Avula, FBC Sports. And a reminder that you can watch all of Fiji's games at the Netball World Cup live on FBC TV beginning this Friday when the Pearls take on Wales in its opening game at 11.50 a.m. The Bar football side was the fourth team to qualify for the semi-finals of the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants tournament. This after the side defeated Lambasa 3-1 in a do-or-die match last night. Here are the goals. As in comes the kick. And the header through from that kick. The header through from that kick. Side, Avinash Swami curls it. Bled through. It's and a penalty. penalty. Yes, Swami comes in, turns and drives. And Avinash Swami has equalized. Robin it from that far touch line side comes in with a corner. Tiwa with a header! And Malakai Tiwa with a header! Swami floats it long for Tiwa. Finds Tiwa, the flag stay down. Tiwa turns and in it comes again to Malakai Rakula. And Malakai Rakula has put the last nail into the coffin. Meanwhile, the venues for the semi finals and final have been decided after the last round of pool matches yesterday. Ba will host Nandi in the first semi final, while Rewa hosts Suva in the second semi final. The venues were decided by Fiji Football after considering the availability of grounds. The first semi final is at Gobin Park Bar on Thursday, starting at 7 pm. And the second one is at um, uh, the Kambo Park Nostori, uh, starting at 7 pm also on Friday afternoon. The final will be played at Rather the Kambo Park on Sunday, as scheduled. The ticket prices will be $7 for adults and $3 for children for the semi finals and final. As mentioned earlier, the rare football side will face Suva in the second semi-final at Dakambao Park on Friday. It should be a tough battle with both teams undefeated after pool play. Rohit Deo has more. The Delta Tigers will carry the favourite stag heading into the semi-final against Suva on home turf. The hosts are not taking their opponents lightly. They still have a, a very capable side of uh, playing well, very experienced. And I think uh, they still uh, have that uh, uh, upfront uh, capabilities uh, compared to us. Rewa looked good on attack in the three pool matches, scoring eight goals in total. The coach says the inclusion of the Vodafone Fiji under-20 players has made a difference in the side. They know that uh, they could have been uh, uh, the key factors if they were there in the Fiji Cup. But uh, they understand as, as well that uh, their presence also attracts uh, a lot of expectation from uh, fans and officials for them to perform uh, well and uh, uh, secure us a, th a final uh, berth. The way the defending champions have performed so far in the tournament, it will take a brave man to bet against the Reds. The Suvarewa match kicks off at 7 p.m. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Suva Special School is celebrating the spectacular achievement of three of its students who won medals at the Special Olympics in Los Angeles, USA. Molly Esther, Abdul Sharif and Asenada Rokorai Ruku are part of the six-member contingent that collected a total of three gold, four silver and three bronze medals at the Games that ended today. Well, the school is uh, very happy and very proud with the achievements of our three students who are at the moment participating in the Special Olympics Old Games and very proud and very happy with the achievements and we really congratulate them for the winning of the gold medals. The Fiji team returns home tomorrow. That is your sports for tonight. Good evening. A significant renovation is underway at Suva's iconic Holiday Inn. Owned by FMPF Hotel Resorts Limited, the Holiday Inn will get a completely revitalized look with the refurbishment of guest rooms, public areas, as well as food and beverage outlets. The renovation started today and will be carried out in stages one wing at a time, with the hotel remaining fully operational while the work goes on. The project is being undertaken by Pacific Building Solutions after a robust public tender process and should be completed by July 2016. FMPF Chief Investment Officer Chaochi Koroi says the project is part of the ongoing rehabilitation process to improve the value of the fund's investments.
cloudy and rainy conditions experienced over most places today. Nandi recorded 4 mm, while Lambasa received 8, not enough to bring some relief to farmers. Suva received the highest rainfall of 14 in the 24 hours to 9 a.m. today. Tropical depression TD-01F is located to the west of Rotuma as of 3 p.m. today. It is slow moving and weakening. Meanwhile, associated trough of low pressure remains slow moving over Fiji. It is expected to affect the group till tomorrow. In temperatures, maximum temperatures hovered be below 26 today. Lombasa managed 26, while Savo Savo and Suva only managed to hit a high of 23. Occasional rain is expected over most places tomorrow. Isolated heavy falls and thunderstorms expected. Rain easing to showers from later in the day. And the outlook for Wednesday is some showers over the eastern and interior of the larger islands elsewhere, afternoon or evening showers. And the main points again, Colonel Mosese Tikoetonga has confirmed his resignation from the military, saying he is leaving on good terms. Commodore Viliame Naupoto says he is ready for the new challenge of leading the Fiji military forces, and the health ministry has revealed that less than half of the babies born every year are exclusively breastfed. Now to our poll segment, the results from last week. We had asked, should more youths be encouraged to enter the local film industry? 80% said yes. This week we're asking, should we have phone tapping in line with international standards? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us on our Facebook page FBC News and if you're on Twitter follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News, I'm Jackie Spate, good night.